Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast, a year and a day later. Today is Wednesday. Oh my Wednesday. God, that means we leave for Coachella tomorrow. And truly, I'm not prepared emotionally. I also have no clothing, but like that's less what I'm worried about, just because like the idea of being in the desert is something that takes a lot of preparation for me as a Jewish person. It's a scary thought. <laughs> and it truly is. I think I threw out accidentally a belt that I really needed. Like I got it, I took it to the cleaners to get extra belt holes. Nothing like more satisfying than being like, the belt doesn't fit. And it came well, back from that, the cleaners. It's a sword that swings both ways because you could need to get extra holes on the, at the end. Oh no no no! It was in the front or it, the yeah, back. smaller, made smaller. <clears throat> and I got in the bag from the dry cleaners with other stuff, I guess. And I must have missed it in the bag, and I threw the bags away. That's and then so this morning annoying. I went to the trash and it wasn't there, and I was like, "Well, I can't believe we've been sitting here for twenty minutes, and I'm just now realizing you're wearing a pussy bow." Of course I am. Pussy bows have changed my life. They like, really have. Well, speaking of pussy bows, if you haven't gotten your merch yet, the merch store will be up for a few more hours. Um, Shopmorningchoats.com. Yeah. Every I'm in order, no, I'm in no rush. Every to take order, it down. me neither. A fifty dollars or more gets a free champagne chalice, and it'll be a good time. So I'm just talking like Game of Thrones. Like last night, I was being so crazy, like because I was I've been catching up on Game of Thrones, and you really get into the vernacular. So like in bed last night, I was like Ben, I am the throne of the Iron Islands because I'm watching Theon Greyjoy now. Because and I, Theo is the throne of the Iron Islands. He really is. He's the rightful heir. What is dead may never die. He is Theon Greyjoy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Him and Sheena have so much in common. Stop. That's so mean. Theon's so much better than that. I know, but you know what? Like, Theon has his redeeming moments too. What kind of preps do we have to do for Coachella? I just want to make sure, like, I got a checklist. I'm getting a manicure, pedicure, and my lip waxed. And then we're getting our eyebrows waxed. I would have liked to get a lash tint, um, but my the salon that we go to is in like transition yeah, right moving. now, and literally. As, like, this week, no one could take me. We have spray tan tomorrow. We have spray tan tomorrow. And then the rest is just, you know, a positive attitude. That's going to be the hardest that's thing, That's the probably. hardest thing to really I'd get I'd rather your head get around. my asshole bleached, because that seems, like, less painful oh, yeah. You'll than have putting to on a smile in the desert. You'll have to shave your legs before the tan. Yeah, exfoliate. Mm -hmm. All the stuff. But then the tan covers up, like, all the other problems that you would have to the worry about. The imperfections, totally. Right, like, the loss of 10 pounds. Right, and also just, like, the general texture. Yes. Malaise, you know? Yeah, and then all your clothes just look a little bit better. Yeah. But I'm really upset about this belt because, oh, sorry, because the belt was part of um, a fanny pack. It was the belt, and then you slide the pack on. Uh -huh. Like, it's not a fanny oh, pack, so it's now a you cute bag. A... Now I have this pack, and I don't no have belt. the belt to put it on. So I guess I have to go shopping today. That's what you get anyone for being wanna, thin. Anyone want to come? That's what you get for being thin. I know. You know what? Fine. <laughs> what color should I get in my nails for Coachella? Like That's neon? A, I'm thinking a plini. I think I'm going to have a whole plini vibe the whole weekend. Think of like your best outfit and then have your nails match that so people be like, she was so coordinated. Well, it's so hard because like I barely have one good outfit. <sighs> well, regardless, we have a busy day today. We're obviously going to deliver the Fast Five. We have a guest, Balake Hortzman, and I finally understand why it's Balake and it's funny. It's from a skit. Ha ha ha. Okay. Um, you know what? I mean, I will say this before he gets here because I can never confront him to his face. But you know, the name Jacqueline is also referenced in that skit, Jay Quellen, and I would never make that my Instagram handle, especially after being runner up on The Bachelor, where now I'm a public figure. Like, change your name. No, I'm just gonna change your name for totally. It's fine for a private citizen, but also, like, there's a certain type of person who, like, makes jokes about old skits. Do you know what I mean? No, and makes Instagram handles about old skits and sticks to them even after. How many Instagram followers does he have? Like, so many, like 500,000. Too many. So now that I know that he's that type of person, like, I'm wondering if we're gonna vibe. Also, Snitch is here because she just wanted to meet him. And I feel like as it'll be a really good thing. Like, maybe we'll make a match. Is yeah. Hortzman a Jewish last name? I don't think so. It's not, not. Right. Like, there, men are Jewish. Like, gold men. Man. Yeah. Gold men. Yeah. Spider-Man. So we have a chance. Yeah, so we have a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. So I'm saying there's a chance. But before we go into matchmaking, we do have one brief task, and that is to deliver the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> also, we recorded an episode with the Skinny Confidential, his and her podcast yesterday, and it was really good. So if, just look out for that. Yeah, I think she. Let, I think we have some time on oh, that. Oh, okay, one. okay. Yeah, but it was it was a fun one. Okay. First story, an update in Operation Varsity Blues. Lori Laughlin and her husband have been hit with new charges in college admission scam. Bad okay. ones. So Felicity Huffman took, you know, her, met, her, she took her troops and they pled guilty. They took a plea deal. So she's really moving forward. Like, so she's, she's in, she's of house guilty. Yeah. Lori Laughlin and Massimo are of house not guilty. And 
I guess in their plea deal, it was said, if you take this deal, you'll face uh, up to 48 months in prison, but we will not file additional charges against you. Oh, and they you. didn't take that deal? And they didn't take that deal. And I guess, like, sources are saying that they are not taking this seriously. And now with, um, so they didn't take the deal. And the, now the additional charges. Additional charges have been filed, which was, like, money laundering. And now they could face even more time in prison. There's each of the two charges against the couple carries a maximum of 20 years. Wow. And uh, they're going to jail. Like, unless they have some magical lawyer, actually. These days, no one gets no, convicted I mean, of anything. It's so, it, like, crazier things have happened, like Johnny Cochran and O.J. Simpson. Right. Like, truly, it's all like about a good R. lawyer. Kelly the first time. Right, it's all about a good lawyer. Yeah. Who's like, what's Robert Shapiro up to these days? Honestly, I wouldn't be surpri surprised if he's defending some people in this case. You know, he, oh my God, totally. But he's also very busy with his shoe empire over at Shoe Dazzle. I wish that Robert, that lawyers, like, especially, like, really public celebrity ones, like, they were, like, PR people where you could see all their clients. Yeah, no, by the but way. it's actually the opposite, I think. You can, but I don't think it's for criminal cases. Like, every celebrity has, like, a, an attorney for, like, their deals, like, to negotiate, and that's public because, oh. like, on IMDb Pro and things like that, you can see that. Like, I have an attorney, but if I got arrested, but I don't think I would call that's her. That's not what this is. Yeah, yeah, no. But I guess if you go to the courts, you could... The, the filings, you could see who the lawyers yeah. are. Yeah, or if you just like wa get, watch the paparazzi pictures of them walking into court, you can see if you recognize their lawyer. But I don't like, think I would, I would recognize, recognize Lisa Bloom because she's always on E Daily Pop. But I don't think I would recognize Robert Shapiro because I'd be waiting for John Travolta as right. Robert Shapiro. Right. And then I would be disappointed not to see John Travolta. Right. It's, you know, my feelings about John Travolta are so weird. So mixed. Because I'm not gonna lie, like, I adore him. Like, adore. To me, he's Danny Zuko, he's Robert Shapiro, he's the greatest actor of our time, he's a cutie, him and Kelly Preston. But he's, um, he's fucking Edna Turnblad. Oh, thank you, yes. But then at the same time, it's like, I know so much about John Travolta in a very negative way. Um, and like, the blinds about him are very legit. And I read a little while ago this huge statement from someone who one of John Travolta's victims, who was a masseuse in a hotel in Philly, who just like hired him to massage, and he was assaulted, and like, it's so crazy. Like I, with like R. Kelly and Michael Jackson, for me it was like cut it off. But John Travolta has been in so many like movies that shaped my childhood. I'm like I forget. Yeah. I saw a picture of him. He shaved his head. I'm like, oh, what a cutie. I'm like, no, not a cutie, <laughs> not at all. Nothing cute about it. Yeah. I feel like we need to do more remembering when it comes to John Travolta. People seem to be forgetting. But there has been like no, so. No, nobody talks that, about it. No, it's not that nobody even talks about it. It's like there's been no documentary. There's but been wait, no I didn't criminal even, cases. I didn't even read a story. The guy who, who spoke out it's, released a statement on his own Twitter. He didn't want any press. He was just like, this happened. So that's when it's difficult to galvanize the, the country because, you know, we need <clears> a documentary. That's true. No, there was a lot more proof stringed together in a pretty documentary for us for other cases. Right. Like, that's so true. If like, a documentary comes out about John Travolta that's compelling, I will, I will turn. No, totally. But there's something like about him that I just that, that makes you forget. Yeah. No, I think that's that's something. Oh, that, and then the Scientology. That's something of it all. that we're all like struggling with as a culture is these beloved figures who are monstrous. Yeah. The, I thought you were going to say Scientology. Well, that's just another layer to the weirdness, you know. Right. He's really high up in in the Sea Org. Him and Tom Cruise are like top donors. Right. And. When me and Margo were in Clearwater, we were talking to like every Uber driver about it because it's literally all the people, all the, the only thing that people in Clearwater talk about. And there's like another level because the people who, like John Travolta and Tom Cruise, who give money to the Sea Org, because it's technically like a church, you don't pay tax on it and it is like a form of tax evasion. It's, but it's legal. They're a yeah, 501c3. It's legal. Yeah, it is legal. And it's like, legal. I think, I don't know that we can ever take down Scientology, but let's talk about how they're a 501c3. Well, speaking of 501c3s, did you see Lisa Vanderpump on Buckshop and Live? Okay. We're going to talk all about it. She was being so bizarre. She was being a publicist. No, I thought she was being like a little bit unhinged. And like, if, you, if you're able to, even if you're a stan, if you could just look at it for a second of like, this woman is a liar. Not a liar. It seemed like she had lost her marbles a little bit because there was one, one conversation where her and Andy were, we're speaking English, but they weren't speaking the same they language. Weren't. Because he was like, well, the article was really written very positive about you, the Radar Online. It seemed to swing in your favor. That's why everyone thought it was written by you. She goes, but I don't need negative press like that. But Andy was like, no, no, but it was a positive article, you know, attributing all the work you do and all the positive things that the organization does. She was like, yeah, but I don't need negative press like that. They were literally just not on the same planet. Agreed. Do you see my story? That yes, she it's hilarious. That reminded me of Lindsay Lohan be making no sense but doing it in an accent and wearing something weird on her head. To the that was and the other like, thing. Lindsay Lohan made her show to become like Lisa Vanderpump. Meanwhile, Lisa Vanderpump, Vanderpump is slowly retracting. And becoming Lindsay Lohan. Totally. Must be something about being a restaurateur. Yes, gets to you. <laughs> 
Um, anyways, keeping you posted, this is really serious about Aunt Becky. She is- It's very serious, and it's, that's not good that some sources are saying they're not taking it seriously. Yeah, I mean, of, like, they'll probably say that, but I feel like she No, feels, you just said that, that's why I said it. No, but, I mean, they will, like, they can say, any, sources right. can say anything. But I do feel the way, like, I feel the way that she, I feel like she might have felt the way we did in the beginning. There's no way people are gonna go to jail for this. Mm -hmm. And so she's not gonna take up a plea because there's no way she feels like she should go to jail for right, this. Right, but it's getting so much worse. But it's getting worse. And I and also, she's because she's not taking it seriously that this is a crime punishable by jail. If you're guilty, you always take a plea deal. Only people who are innocent feel like they really want justice. No, I didn't do this. I don't want the plea deal, let's go to trial. But she is, you know, so obviously guilty that I, the fact that they didn't take the plea deal is so crazy. I feel like you could argue, argue the opposite, though. Too. Why? Like, if you're innocent, like, it just depends on how the trial's going No, because go. if you're innocent, and you're not going to so take sad. a plea deal that, that puts you in jail for a smaller amount of time if you didn't do anything. And no, but it's so sad because just the criminal justice system is, is a wonderful, but it's also so flawed, and you can't guarantee, just because you're innocent doesn't mean necessarily that you will be proven innocent. There are so many no, different yeah, totally. factors at play. So someone who's but I'm saying, innocent someone... might take a plea deal because, like, they don't have the facts to back them up. Like For sure, for sure. But... Nobody, very rarely would an innocent person pl take a plea deal if they didn't do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's just logic. So there's so much evidence against them. She knows she did it. Like, she knows she's guilty. So passing on a plea deal is really odd. That's, like, really bad legal advice. Unless they think Unless that they innocent? can take it on. I don't know. Or they think that a jury will be swayed by Aunt Becky Maybe. in the room. You know? But then they're also just prolonging this whole thing for them and their kids. Agreed. Also, I saw another story that her daughters are not allowed to withdraw from USC. Okay, but what does that mean? Like, they're holding them like prisoners? The University of Southern California won't allow Lori Laughlin's daughters to drop out of school despite allegations their rich parents bribed the girls' way into getting there. Olivia Jade and Isabella Giannulli remain enrolled at the University of Southern California, which put holds on the accounts of all students. Did she just storm out? No, um, I think Blake arrived, right. so she went to go so get him. I just someone to tell her we're doing a live show to stop slamming the right. door. Right, so she made sure to slam the door behind her. <laughs> Twice! <laughs> Quote, this prevents the students from registering for classes until they have agreed to participate in the review of their case, withdrawing from the university, or acquiring transcripts while their cases are under review, the college said in a Monday statement. But I feel like a, any college can't stop anyone from withdrawing. Yeah, like, no, it's like, it's, it's not, not prison. prison. Yeah, no, this is really Actually. weird. No, but I get, it's also like they're not minors. Like in camp, if you wanted to leave camp as a kid, you couldn't. Yeah, because, unless your parents come and pick you up. Right, but like, if you're a college student, you're over 18, you can leave whenever you want. Yeah. It's really weird. He, they will keep them, you here till four. We can't keep them past four. <laughs> well, yes, the criminal justice system, it is flawed, but you know, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous, and in New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate those vicious fa- Oh my Felonies. God, oh my God. Oh my God. That's never happened to me before. Holy shit. Take some time, reflect. Think about what's important. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit. These are their stories. Dun dun. Okay, sorry, I just like, that's never happened to me before. Like, I've never stumbled over my words. I think this is also a good thing because I think that they should stay in college. If I was their friend, that's what I would tell them to do. They have two options. And they just need some good friends to yeah. like, walk with them to class. Yeah. They, they have two options here. One, they can, you know, go to college because it's looking like they might need to start making some money on their own. Or they could just download Robinhood and invest. And start investing. And start investing. That's, that's a great true. way just to get your portfolio up. Who needs college when you have Robinhood? Because Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, e ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees so you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Plus, there's no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes it easy for newcomers and experts alike. Robinhood is giving our listeners of The Morning Toast a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at toast.robinhood.com. That's toast.robinhood.com for a free stock from Robinhood just for our listeners. Don't say we never gave you anything. I love Robinhood. Okay, next story is really exciting. A little nerve wracking because like everything is ruined these days, but Camila Cabello to star in the new Cinderella movie. I saw. Singer-songwriter Camila Cabello will star in writer-director Kay Cannon's of Pitch Perfect yes. retelling of Cinderella for Sony Pictures. Cabello will be involved in the music for the project, which grew out of an original idea from James Corden. 
The film will be produced by Corden and Leo Perlman through their Fullwell 73 banner. The new Cinderella will be a music-oriented version of the traditional tale of the orphaned girl with an evil stepmother. Okay, I know I love James Corden. This is hardly an original idea. Yeah, it's no, no, been no. done. But I do love Talk to James Brandy. Corden getting um, involved in musical theater because I feel like I didn't really know that he was like such a... a Performer until mm -hmm. carpool karaoke where he started like harmonizing perfectly. And then I learned a little bit more about his background and he he has a big like theater background and I think he'll be good on this. He's also doing Cats with Taylor Swift. Like, they're filming yeah. in London, so I'm just loving him like dipping his toes into other projects. Um, and I love Camila Cabello for this role. Like she is, she really is. Like no matter we we make fun of her because like she always looks drunk, but at the end of the day, she's very she's talented. so talented. And when I watched her on X Factor, like I thought she was too good for Th Fifth Harmony back then, and she truly is. And just like watching them all do their like sad solo careers, like it's just proof that like. Camila Cabello was always too good for them. Like, look at her, like, opening for Taylor Swift. But also, like, we've been saying for a while now that she's drunk, but, like, she's still going, so. Right. Maybe she's just, like, one of those people. The proof is in the pudding, and it's, like, she's okay. Like, she seems okay. She seems okay. And, I, no, I'm, I'm really a, a fan of hers. So, um, I think this is great. I love her expanding her her career into the acting field while also, you know, relying on her strong vocal cords for the Cinderella songs. And I think this is great. And when I heard it, I was like, yes. Okay, I just want to point out like- But she'll never be as good as I, Brandy. I want to point out one interesting fact, because it says the best known Cinderella movies have been Disney's animated drama released in 1950 and two live action remakes, 1997's version starring Brandy and Whitney Houston and the 2015 film with Lily James and Rob Stark. Yes. And okay, I just want to say, I don't know why that movie like went nowhere. Nowhere. It sh why wasn't it Beauty and the Beast live action remake? Like why? Wh why? And did especially it because they cast truly like Cinderella and Prince Charming. Right. And then also, lest we not forget, there have been a couple Cinderella remakes that aren't mentioned here. A Cinderella story. Another Cinderella. I don't story. think those are um, like connected to the Cinderella franchise. But like they are, and they keep making those. Uh, Made for TV. Made for TV Cinderella movies. And they're amazing. Like the Selena Gomez one, so good. I'm pretty sure there was one with Lucy Hale, so good. The Selena Gomez one is another Cinderella story. Yeah. And then the Hillary Duff one is a Cinderella Elsa, story. And I, I don't think either of them are actually part of the franchise, which is why they weren't mentioned. But I do have to agree with you that like the 2015 version, which was slated to be like just as big as Beauty and the Beast, like didn't go anywhere. And why did nobody care that Richard Madden, the hottest man alive, was Prince Charming? And then there's a Cinderella story, Once Upon a Song, with Lucy Hale. And it's great. And everyone should oh, check got it out. It. But those aren't considered to be included in the franchise. No, but it's like, and I, I don't it think seems that if you if you put them all together, a Cinderella movie comes out every year. Yeah, I also love like how many celebrities get involved in the Cinderella storytelling. Like Cinderella on Broadway had Nene Leakes, and it also had Fran Drescher. And then we had the Selena Gomez, Hilary Duff of it all, and then we had uh, Whitney Houston and Brandy, like truly icons. So I just really am appreciative of the Cinderella franchise, like respecting the hell out of celebrity talent. And then like Ella Enchanted, was she part of Cinderella? No. And then if you watch Descendants, what's Cinderella's daughter's name, counselor? Descendants? Aubrey. Oh, Aubrey, yeah. Descendants 3 trailer. I know. Descendants 3. So I'm guessing it's not in theaters? For anyone who's a Descendants fan or a parent of a Descendants fan. Yeah, you have a better luck with that. Yeah, it is, the, it is so good. It is so good. I'm so excited for Descendants 3. I'm excited for you. Kenny Ortega. Um, wait, just really quickly, back to the Camila Cabello of it all. Um, I also think just like her as a, as a woman is snatched. Like I'm really looking forward to her in that corseted blue dress, you know, hair in a chignon, the whole thing. We only get that for like 30 seconds though. At the and end. And the rest she's like in a broom closet. Yeah, totally. No, but she goes to the ball too. Yeah, no, what I'm saying that's the 30 seconds at the ball. The end, it's like the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frustrating. I'm just, I'm excited. I wonder who's going to play the evil stepmother. Hopefully Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah, she's so good at it. Yeah. No, okay, that's an, that's an interesting role to cast because it has to be someone of a certain age, but also someone who's good at playing evil. Like Jennifer Gardner can never do it. She's America's sweetheart, you know? Right. Who's someone who has like a lot of experience playing a villain? I don't know. I don't know, but like. I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it either, but this will be good. Honestly, they need like a real housewife in there. Nene Leakes. Honestly, they need Heather Dubrow. Wow, that's such a good call. I think that's and a great idea. And she is an actress. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Interesting. And she's so good at like looking down on others. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, next story. Anna Wintour reveals what she'll wear to the 2019 Met Gala. The 2019, and I don't care what she's gonna wear, I care about the, the theme. theme. The 2019 Met Gala is fast approaching and Anna Wintour already has an outfit picked out. She told CNN's Christiane Amapour that her outfit will include millions of feathers. The statement is a reference to a quote from author Susan Sontag. The theme is notes on camp. 
And Susan Sontag said, camp is a woman walking around in a dress made of three million feathers. I don't know that that's camp. I know that camp. I guess they're going for the camp more like outdoorsy, woodsy kind of vibe. No. But I'm just like loving a relatable theme. Like when it was Comme des Garcons, I truly have no idea what that means. And I also thought it was Comme des Garcons like the whole time. So I just hated that. Like now at least it's an English word, which I can understand. And it's fucking camp toast. And it's me. Like I'm going to show up dressed as a fucking s'more with like a bonfire coming out of my ass. I'm gonna dress up as a counselor snitch. I'm gonna dress up as American camper. Mm, Italian camper's a little more more chic, yeah. French camper. But though. I'm really looking forward to it. It is me, French camper. To seeing how the celebrities are gonna ruin the scene. Because like there's so many ways they could go about it in like an obvious way. Like, but they're also interpretive and artistic. They'll take it to be like the camp. Or the, oh, they'll make the, it uh, like the oh, I got it. Someone's gonna do something. No, I was just gonna make a terrible joke. I'm not gonna make it anymore. Like if you're not wearing Sophie shorts, you're off theme. Right. If you're if your solo pants don't flip over and have something cute on the back, not in theme. And if you're not wearing sneakers, you're not in theme. And, and if your hair prepared, isn't braided, you are not in theme. No, if you don't have a Nalgene water bottle or any any water bottle, you're not in theme. And honestly, if you're not sweating, you're not in theme. No. If you're not wearing a sports bra, you're not in theme. Totally. If you don't have color work face paint on, you are not in theme. If your back isn't broken from sleeping on a wooden bed, you're not in theme. I think that's it. I could I could always keep going. No, I mean, we could. And if you don't have the fucking greatest counselor in America, honestly, they should invite Counselor Snitch. If Anna Wintour had one sense about her, she would invite Counselor Snitch to Camp Met Gala. That sounds so fun. And if it's not like camp themed Oh, before, okay, wait, I have something to tell you. It ha don't ruin that it's camp themed. Okay. Don't say it's a meh. No, it is camp. No, don't look at the comments, I wanna tell you. Someone has translated for us. The word camp they are using, not to mean like summer camp, it's more campy, like flamboyant, more like drag attire. It's a fashion term for flamboyant. So then why wouldn't you say... Drag queen flamboyant. campy is what people are saying. Why wouldn't you say notes on flamboyant? Okay, I have to say, I'm really disappointed that, that we're not getting... That would actually sound more like a Mecca. I'm theme. disappointed that we're not getting a summer camp theme, but this is still a really good theme. And I hope that like one person <clears throat> didn't watch the toast today and doesn't know that that's what that means and dresses their people as campers. Right, like Elle Woods. <laughs> Or like, oh my God, imagine. Like Beverly Hills. What a missed opportunity. Kim and, and Courtney showing up with all the kids dressed as little campers with like, Camp Kardashian with a K. And if someone doesn't show up with a clipboard, you're not in theme. Fuck, oh my God, that's such a better theme. This is still a good theme. It's better than Comme de Garçon because I still didn't know what that meant. Yeah, this sounds a little bit more tangible for the average citizen. This just means like glitz, glam, makeup, like good. Isn't, I'm, that, I'm, isn't that what Met Gala means? No, but everyone's always showing up with their understated no, dresses. No, they look really nice. Yeah, no, no, but like even Kim when she just wore that white dress, and fucking Kendall wore a jumpsuit? No. Camp, you know what? They probably saw all the looks from the past years being like, why is nobody putting on makeup? And then being like, you know what? Let's make it the most extreme theme, a drag theme. I, but, it's, but then why wouldn't they make it drag themed? Like, I think they just wanted to slap a nicer word on it. I think a camp is like camp. It doesn't mean anything else other than like campy camp. Okay, no, actually, campy. I changed my mind. I'm really excited about this. Like, okay, flamboyance, like love. Call it that, but wait, if you're calling it camp, you better have a fucking counselor. No, Jackie, because it's fashion, and I guess everyone there knows that camp means flamboyant, but we don't, because nobody invites us to things. I don't know, I wanna see fucking Oliver Rustig from Balmain dressing all the girls in Intense. Balmain camp. Yeah, oh my God, that's so cute. Like the ribbed shorts. Maybe this will inspire a brand or a designer to do like an entire camp themed collection. Cause when he saw the invitation, he thought it was that as well. And then was like a little disappointed to find out that it wasn't that, but then automatically felt inspired to just do like entire collection around like bonfire s'more vibes. And have a cologne that smells like bonfire. Love that. I, so I'm gonna rustic. nominate Tommy Hilfiger for the job. I think he yeah. could be dressing us campers. Or Ralph Lauren, like more like American. Right. I like that. Plaid vibes. But then there's Italian camper. Maybe maybe Moschino will yeah. give us some Italian Versace. camper flair. Yeah. Did you say Versace yesterday? Of course I did, and you didn't even pick up on it. No, I didn't. It's an ode to Elle Woods. A little Versace camper? A little Versace never hurt nobody. Versace camper. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone pulls out of their hat, and hopefully there's some confusion on the carpet, because that would be funny. That would be wonderful. If I see one Sophie short, I'll die a happy woman. I know that I won't, but maybe someone can wear it under their dress for me. If like some, if some model is watching or something right now who's like going with a designer, right. like please just wear a Sophie short under yeah. your dress. Yeah, or Sophie should really be like the sponsor of the entire event. They should are like models. Yeah, Sports Authority, totally. Huh? Paragon Sports. Huh? Love that. 
Okay, next up, Amelia Clark says, Instagram Photoshopping apps should be banned. Easy for you to say. Totally. Amelia oh. Clark is not a fan of Photoshop. The Game of Thrones actress opened up about the pressures of social media in a new interview with Miss Vogue. What's Miss Vogue? Sounds like something we could get into. You I was going to say, sounds like someone who's trying to be Vogue, but has absolutely no affiliation. No, it sounds like it is a It's like Teen Vogue. Oh, no, they have Teen Vogue. Quote, I think that we can find our inner beauty by looking inwards and not outwards, she told the magazine. Seriously, now we're really <laughs> screwed because we've got the editing, we've got the shading, we've got all that bloody nonsense. They don't look like that. Ain't nobody look like that. She went on to mention the privilege that comes with being a celebrity, calling certain images fake, and pointing out that famous people can afford professionals to help with their diet, exercise, hair, and makeup, and even spanks. Clark even admitted that some of her past movie posters have been heavily retouched. Quote, hey guys, I ain't got no double Ds. I'm very happy with what I've got, and it's not what you've put on that poster, she claimed she told producers. However, the star also pointed out that it's not just famous people who edit their online personalities and looks. Quote, I struggle with the girl next door also editing their pictures, Clark continued. It's not right. Where is that human interaction? I think that the apps that make people airbrush themselves and look thinner or look clearer skin should be banned. I don't think it should be on the phone for young people. I do not agree with it. I do not like it. It doesn't make me feel good. I don't do it on my Instagram. I filter, sure. Everybody's got a filter, but ain't no way that I'm going to retouch that stuff. So she just draws a line at filtering. That makes no sense. I totally disagree with what she's saying. The first half of the interview I agree with like the fact that every celebrity who graces a cover of a makeup I mean of a magazine or like a makeup ad and they look nothing like themselves like that is terrible and like the fact that they think the only way to sell makeup is to have everyone not look like themselves I agree but a, a private citizen's personal choice to just edit a photo of uh, <coughs> oh my god edit a photo is not Amelia Clark's business and like her being judgmental and condescending on the girl next door who might be insecure about something and just wants to fix it like please that's such bullshit that's so not the same right and if you take away the girl next door's editing apps okay celebrities magazines are still editing pictures so then they it, there's just even more of a gap between the way that they we perceive that they look right. and the way that we feel and not only but that but it's like if I edit my picture to the best that I can look like thin skin blah and then I look at a celebrity's version I'm like hey like you know we're not so different mm -hmm. but if they get to edit their pictures and we don't no and it's just like okay let's you're say the queen and we're the sorry people so, but what she doesn't even so. call out here is the celebrities who do it to themselves they're like us celebrities we're victims they're always changing our pictures for us please bitch we look at your Instagram look at celeb face every single celebrity on their own on their own personal Instagram edits photos because it's a personal choice I hate this like judgmental nature around editing photos. If I shot for a magazine and they wanted to make me thinner, like that's mean because I didn't ask you to do that. But if it's my personal choice as it is or a celebrity, regardless if you're famous or not, it's a personal choice to face tune your photos and they do that. So people who are like judgmental about that, I fucking hate like good on you. You accept all your flaws. You're amazing. You're better than all of us, but we're not everyone's like that. So because you think you're better, we have to look ugly in pictures. Please. It's such bullshit. Such These are so not the same. I will uh, anyone who equates magazine airbrushing to uh, private citizens face tuning, uh, no. Right, and you know what? When I face tune my pictures, I never accidentally give myself three legs. Right. So you guys can calm down with the photos. I don't take you for a fool. <laughs> No, but like they get out of control because they'll take a picture where they like your head in one, they like your arm in the other, they like your torso in the other, and they put all together, and that's a fake person. Yep. You know, Agreed. I take the the. The, the one shot. The one that's the least worse, and they make it better. Yeah. Please. Amelia Clark, and honestly. You know and it's like everyone will still have to be accountable when we see you in person. It's like you want to play, you want to pretend you're all that, okay, but I'm still going to meet you one day. If you want to live in the real world. And if you want to be that girl who's irrecognizable from her photos, then that's your fucking cross to bear. And you know what? It's your personal choice, and I'm okay with that. Personal choice, Danny. <laughs> Ugh, I do love her though. Me too. And but it's this like if I was Daenerys Targaryen, I'd be like, we can are all beautiful. I'd, th I'd think it too. But you know what? Like as someone who, she's talking about me. Like I face you my photos. No, I choose I to. I actually don't think she's talking about you because the amount that we use Facetune, like we still look like real people on our Instagrams. Like I don't think that's what's upsetting her. It's like these Instagram thoughts that it's like when you look at celeb face and it's the paparazzi took a picture of them on the beach and then you see the picture that they posted and it's two different people. Yeah. And it's like that picture that they put, the, the, the common people didn't see that paparazzi picture, but they saw the one right. on Instagram, and it makes people feel bad. No, it's but like, like, how come my waist doesn't look like, how come I don't look like, right. like this? An hourglass. But it's because that person doesn't look like it either. Right, and like good on, on Daenerys, like great, you feel like you're comfortable to take photos and not edit them because you have a full hair and makeup team and a staff and a trainer and a nutritionist. So you're the exact type of person that you're making fun of. No, and she's saying that she's owning it. 
But she's saying we should all, you know. Yeah, but so it's easy for her to say. If I had a trainer and a nutritionist and all that, I could say that too. We should all embrace. No, bitch, because I'm fat and I don't want to be, so. Yeah, also, like, freedom of, of face tunes. Yeah, totally. I believe, is that in the Bill of Rights? It should I think be. It should be. You know, the, the Constitution really needs to, it's a living document. Evolve. And it needs to evolve with the times. Totally. And I think it should be included as an amendment. Imagine if we took it to the. To the Supreme Court. <laughs> no, I just, this narrative of like people like looking down on people who edit their pictures as a choice is, is, is wrong. I don't agree. She, she has a little bit of an argument when it comes to like the industry, like demanding that every photo in a magazine be airbrushed to perfection. That's correct. But if it's my personal choice on my own Instagram with my own photo to edit the way that I want, you're not allowed to say anything. Also, you know what? Industry, you guys go first. You stop doing it first. Then and we'll do maybe it. Maybe I would follow suit because totally. then still we're all on the same playing field. <clears throat> Agreed. It's a it's great point. Also, our fifth and final story is a little bit of a departure from the morning toast, but I saw it and it seemed like really big news. And I could just see the astronauts at NASA like releasing this news and then being like, why does no one care? Oh, yeah. So I would like to put forth that a black hole picture has been captured for the first time in a space breakthrough. I'm and trying, like, I'm really trying, trying to, to care. care. I know, I know, me too. And even if at the end of this, we don't care, like, and it every seems, time I think of a, bl a black hole. It seems hole, like this is, I'm holding, I'm, I'm reading history and I just want to share it. I just think of that movie, The Theory of Everything, and it's like so sad. I don't, I'm not. What quite, he did to that wife, unforgivable. I'm not quite sure what the black hole is, but hopefully the science correspondent for The Guardian can let us know. Okay. Astronomers have captured the first image of a black hole, heralding a revolution in our understanding of the universe's most enigmatic objects. Okay, we know about enigmas wrapped in wrapped riddles, in riddles yeah. and cash. The picture shows a halo of dust and gas, tracing the outline of a colossal black hole at the heart of the Micer 87 galaxy, 55 M light years from Earth. The black hole itself, a cosmic trapdoor from which neither light nor matter can escape, is un but the latest observations take astronomers right to its threshold for the first time, illuminating the event horizon beyond which all known physical laws collapse. The breakthrough image was captured by the Event Horizon Telescope, a network of eight radio telescopes spanning locations from Antarctica to Spain and Chile, in an effort involving more than 200 scientists. We have a picture of it up on the, up on the screen. Sorry, that was truly like one of the most boring things ever. And I'm I, not I missed done. the whole thing. Oh my God, please be. Please be done. Why? It's interessant. And these astro astronauts work so hard, and it's like, that's true. They do work hard. 200 scientists, this network of telescopes of spanning eight locations from Antarctica to Chile. Who knew they were working together? It's exciting. It's exciting. I'm happy for the astronauts. And it's things like this that it's like, you know, we all are divided, states, countries, but we're, at the end of the day, we're all part of Earth. And Human it, race. And it's, at, it's like, and the black hole, I, I'm a, I don't know if it's a negative or a positive thing, but it's like the White Walkers. We can all be fighting the war of five so kings true. in Westeros, but we need to stop killing each other so we have an army for the black hole. I think a black hole's good. I don't know, something that, where it's like uh, neither light nor matter can escape, so it's like if you got stuck in a black hole, you can never get out. Oh my God, but do you die? Oh my God, that's literally my worst nightmare, like being alive forever with nothing. Yeah, but there's no food, so eventually you'll die. Oh, okay, well that's also my worst nightmare, dying by starvation. It's the worst kind of death. Is it? Yeah. Totally, because like how long does it take you, like a month? A long time. Depends on who you are, too. And it depends how much you're eating regularly. For me, like, I'm going from, like, 3,000 calories a day. It would take me, like, six months to die. Yeah. So. <coughs> Game of Thrones really opens your eyes to all the horrible ways to die. Yes. They're very creative in that way. And I think in watching, I think the worst death, other than, like, what, like, uh, fucking Ramsay did to Theon and just, like, leaving, like, that sort of torture is death by fire. Even though the Lord of Light says it's the purest death. Right, but also Burning like, alive sounds horrible. When Theon Greyjoy um, tried to cut the head of... <gasps> Sir Roderick? Sir Roderick, and he like couldn't do it because he wasn't strong enough, so he like went a bunch of times and it still didn't come he off, and hacked. then kicked it, and then kicked it, kicked the head off. That was really bad. That might be the worst, you're right. Oh my God, that was That was horrible. Because like he was getting his head cut off, and the guy doing it like wasn't strong enough, so he was like with a half a head for a while. <sighs> but I just got like a chill in my lower back. Just in time for Balake. <laughs> what are we going to talk to Balake about? What's he up to? Like, what's he up to? Who's he dating? He was rumored to be with Christina. Right, but like, uh, time people are shipping him and Hannah G now because she w said on a podcast that she thinks he's really cute and they're both going to paradise. Right, but that's what, like, it definitely won't work out. She'll, like, like 
it never works out like that. It's always the one that you don't expect. So it'll be always. awkward. Ne she'll date someone in paradise and she'll watch that interview in hindsight and be like, that's awkward that like she said publicly that she thought he was cute when so she has a different boyfriend. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to Be drop a comment for Beverly oh, Hills. Oh, sorry. Oh my God. Totally. I totally. Beverly forgot. Hills. That's where I want to be. Did you think the opening was weird? What How was the opening? It was like they went from the Kyle later. 24 hours later, and then all of a sudden they're at drinks with no explanation. I thought they were going to go back over what happened in the 24 hours. It was just like weird. I just thought it was weird, like that we're giving this pertinent airtime to Lisa's kitchen. Who gives a shit? Oh my god, how many times is she gonna say? She's totally. Wait, she's literally. And she's acting literally like someone was beheaded in the kitchen. She's remodeling her kitchen, probably spending over $100,000 because she got in a fight with Kyle. Like, no, it's but like she, people, no, but she's acting like that's the reason why she did it, but she was talking but about like, it before. LVP stands. Do you not see through that? Like this joke that she's made repeatedly, it looks like she makes it next week too when she takes the sledgehammer, yep. the on Greyjoy style because she doesn't have the strength. I have the funniest thing to say. In the very beginning of the episode, she's like, you know, it's like, Yes, it's, she was saying that, that someone said something to her that wasn't nice. She's like, yes, it's an offhanded comment, but you know, those add up. And that's what people have been saying about Lisa forever, her British jabs. It's like one jab, one jab, one jab, they all add up. So someone says something a little off color to you and now you're mad? You have all people have literally the least amount of ground to stand on when it comes to jabs. You are the jab queen. That's the only reason you should be wearing that ugly crown on your head. Because you are the queen of jabs and that's it. You're not the queen of Beverly Hills. You're a bitch and I hate you. And I was getting literally infuriated watching. Infuriated. And they did the poll on Matra Evans' side. Who's, Bullshit. Whose side are you on? They're and trying to get her to show up to the reunion because they heard that she's not going oh, to. Yeah. So they're kissing her ass. And they did not accept a, a caller. They did, did not work at Vanderpump Dogs. Anytime that she's been on um, Vanderpump Rules, I mean, anytime she's been on Matra Evans' Live this season, she's been alone. And that's never happened. She wasn't always alone. She's alone this time. No, she's been alone before. Before, but not exclusively. She's been on that twice just for this season, completely alone. I mean, And probably pre-recorded. Because no one, like, she wouldn't even go with anyone because then they would have to hold her accountable because she can say crazy stuff. And, and I'm sure the girls that are watching at home shouting, like, that's not what happened. Yeah. But no one's there to hold her accountable. And Andy is, is treading lightly with her. But he was going a little bit. He knows. Yeah, no, he was holding her a little bit accountable, but, like, not all the way, because that's not his role. It's not his role, and they have a relationship outside Beverly Hills where they're both producers on Vanderpump Rules, right. so they have, like, a, they're co-workers. But I did love how Bravo, like, shows that she got flowers from John Sessa. Like, you know, they're trying to show us the full picture. Also, John and when, Sessa, when, when he, he was her, talking to her, and he, like, he seems like someone who talks really close to your oh, face. Oh, totally. And, and he was, like, looking, like, in, like, inside of her. He also looked like he was wearing highlighter. And... I was just like, this doesn't look, I would never, I hate talking to people like that who are like so up in Same. your room. I need a few paces back just in case my breath is bad and you will never know. And when Denise was at her party for 45 minutes sitting by herself, like I've never wanted to hug someone so much in my life. I felt so bad for her. And you know what that's like, like with a new group of friends where you literally don't know anyone and the one person you know doesn't show up. But you're also Denise Richards, so it's, you're sitting there alone, but everyone knows, knows who you, you are. are. So, it's so even everyone's more looking at you and totally. it's like. What a good friend for even staying. What a good friend for even going in the first place when she had these plans for, it's her party. They all went to Beauty and Essex for her to celebrate her wedding. Yeah. And you, you know who wasn't happy about that? Camille. Right. I can't stand Camille. I might like her less than Lisa Vanderpump. I just don't understand her MO. I don't, well, Actually, did you see her tweeting apologizing about the teeth thing? No. Well, she should have apologized. That was mean. I do understand her MO because it's like. Her I'm MO is so obvious. Stay on the show. show. Exactly. Her getting off the show was the worst thing to ever happen to her. Now that she's tasted it, every moment she gets on camera, she tries to make it the most extreme ball gag teeth moment so that they put it on the commercial and they like her and that people remember her. The fact that she has the ball gag in the clubhouse is her greatest accomplishment. She will do anything just to stay on the show. The worst thing that ever happened to her actually <laughs> was Denise Richards getting married because it was supposed to be her, her wedding week. season. Yep. But it's like we already got a wedding. I don't From a main cast member. From a, a celebrity who, by the way, I'm really liking. Me too. I am turning on, I am like turning the other way on her and like I'm, because they stopped talking about Charlie Sheen and like yeah. I'm seeing her personality and she's just a smart girl. Yep. And I, I always like a smart girl. And um, it's like I don't feel the need for, I'm not craving another wedding this season. No, totally. And but, but the fact that it's destination helps because I am craving a trip. A trip. Yeah, and I thought they were going to announce a trip soon because they were like, well, we haven't gotten to celebrate your wedding, so let's go to dinner. I thought they were going to go to a trip. Yeah. The dinner was cute. Um, Camille was, that was wrong. You're not, you can't make fun of someone's like physical appearance. That was really mean. And I don't know why she said that because her, 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 she's firmly taken the side of Lisa Vanderpump. Right. So it's like a really weird thing to say. It's like she just wanted to be included with the group who was hating on Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah. I it was really it was, it was uncomfortable for the other girls because it's like no one's going to stand up for Lisa Vanderpump because they're all fighting with her, but they also aren't going to like Laugh. indulge Camille and 
I don't know how I would like they definitely didn't handle it right by like laughing and covering their faces but there was no right way to handle it it was it was honestly horrifying it was I love Lisa Rinna and I can't believe that people are turning on her, on her so much this season like claiming that she's behind this whole thing which is like the dumbest theory ever she's definitely loving the takedown because she has been Lisa Vanderpump's punching bag for three seasons straight so she's liking it from the side and it's like we saw in tonight's episode on last night's episode that Rinna spoke to Vanderpump about the happy birthday pills thing that was crazy and I didn't know the, I didn't know that and then when asked about it on watch what happens live the fact that Lisa Vanderpump was being such a victim. Like, and then she said, "My it was three months before." And then she's thinking, "You're gonna post that weeks after." So was it weeks or, or three months? Month. And she was be like, in that moment, watch Rinna's take on their conversation, and then watch Lisa Vanderpump and watch what happens live. And that is a prime example of her duplicity and her conning there of is, the average American viewer. There is no way in hell, Lisa Vanderpump. I mean, Lisa Rinna put that up to make fun of her brother's suicide. That is so crazy. One, she's not an evil person, Lisa Vanderpump. But I mean, Lisa Rinna. And I don't even think an evil person would do that. Two, it makes sense a why... A stupid person would do that. It makes sense why Lisa Rinna put that up. Like, we get it. The jokes. She's the pill girl. She's always talking about pills. She took this thing that they tried to pin on her and made it like her shtick. And it's funny. Totally makes sense why she did it. And I understood the second I saw the photo, I didn't need an explanation. Three, her sister died of an overdose. She would never make light of an overdose, especially because she'd spoken about it so openly when Eden Sassoon was on the show. Like, there's just no way. And the fact that Lisa Vanderpump could in any way have interpreted it like that is just proves the way Lisa Vanderpump thinks. Right, and also, the fact that she would continue to put forward that it could have been that way is so that's evil yeah also we've been watching the show for a few months now and I didn't know that that's how her brother passed away I like we knew, I, we knew it was suicide, suicide but we didn't, we didn't know, know how it was, it was an overdose so <clears throat> totally. we know that Rin and Vanderpump aren't that close and it's very private it's, very possible and, and probably sure as fact that she did not know that that's how he passed away. It never once for one second occurred to me that it could have been about anything else other than the bag of pills. I just, like, Vanderpump was really pissing me off on tonight's episode on Watch What Happens Live. And the fact that she hasn't been watching the episodes, it's like, what are you coming to speak on? You don't even know what's airing. Totally. You know, it's like, like, you didn't do the, the reading. No, you didn't do the reading. Exactly. Don't raise your fucking hand. No, totally. It's, it's not fair, actually. And she's supposed to be writing blogs. How is she writing blogs if she's not watching episodes? And by the way, no matter whose side you're on in this entire thing, you cannot deny that the fact that the, the way that Ken raised his voice at a woman, got in her face and threw, him, threw her out of his house is wrong. Even if you're an LVP stand, you have to be able to own that. And the fact that they are now taking Kyle making light of Goodbye Kyle as an attack on Lisa and Ken is the craziest thing I put up on my Instagram that I was leaving Orlando and I said, goodbye, Kyle. And I got DMs from Lisa Vanderpump stands being like, that is bullying. So let me just, I wanna understand the mind of a deranged, de demented Lisa Vanderpump fan. So me quoting something from Housewives is bullying, okay. But Ken and Lisa screaming in a woman's face, Kyle was so calm. I keep watching it back, I don't know how she didn't cry. She was so calm, she never once raised her voice. They were cursing, screaming, threw her out of her house. That's not bullying, but me quoting from Housewives is. I have a question then. And Ken raising his voice in a woman's face and screaming and spitting in her face, that's not bullying. So but her, her saying goodbye Kyle is. Every, you're, you're, de you're demented. Every time I say, wow, Bethany, just wow, am right. I bullying Ramona? No. Every time you say, um, clip, clip, are you uh, making fun of Luann? Because that's who that was directed at. Every time I say, you're such a fucking liar, Camille, am I making fun of Kyle? Kyle? No. It's so crazy. Like I'm they, sorry. The, I, and I'm just I'm like, a bully. I'm not really shocked that Lisa Vanderpump has managed to turn all these things to the in cross. her own in her own direction. But I am surprised at how many people are following Lisa yeah, Vanderpump. Yeah, you guys and the toasters. I'm so disappointed. Uh, I mean, the toasters for the most part are on the right side of this, but just it's the country. That poll was complete bullshit. Complete bullshit. I hope that they rigged it just to make her keep just to keep her in the seat. Yeah, because she has all the power right now. If she doesn't show up to the reunion, it'll be very lackluster because the entire season is about but her. But then she won't be on the next, I kind of hope she doesn't show up to the reunion because then it's confirmed she won't be on the next season. I mean, I think regardless, even if she does show up, this is her last season. She, the one thing Lisa Vanderpump can't do is be accountable. And what everyone is trying to get her to do now is take accountability for her role in this fight. And that's the one thing she can't do and she will not show up. I don't know. I think she could show up to the reunion. It could get bloody and they all agree to disagree. And then next season they let her bring a close friend on. That's I, what happened with Dorit. Dorit came in yeah. as her uh, in her pocket. But you know what? Maybe Lisa they let didn't her even bring, want to do this season. Maybe they let her. But Lisa needs to be on the show. And the more that I think about it, the more as much as she's so wealthy. Okay, like let's see the receipts. Also, um, she needs the show. She needs Vanderpump Rules. She just opened a new restaurant. Like she needs to be at the top yeah. of her game. She, this isn't the time to fade into irrelevancy. Totally. totally. She needs the show. 
and she'll do what it, and it's so for that reason I think she will come on the reunion but I wouldn't be surprised if they were like okay you know what if you come back next season we'll let you bring Pandora Joyce oh my god totally that would be so horrible. interesting it's horrible but I'm just saying that's an interesting theory I like where your head's like, at I think they will de whoever is the new housewife next season will definitely and Lisa Vanderpump is there it will be a friend of Lisa's because she's not going to come into another season alone. Right, like like a Catherine Edwards, like someone who was Or Camille blindly. is her friend now, because Camille they'll was at- They'll make Camille a full housewife. They'll make a, yeah. <clears throat> and that would be, the debt would be paid, and, and Camille would owe Lisa Vanderpump. Totally. And she wouldn't turn on her, because like that's but all Camille's she wanted, is to be enough. a full housewife. Camille's not strong enough. I don't know, she'll say some crazy shit. Totally, because she's been around forever, she knows stuff. Wow, honestly, the season's so good, and I know everyone's being like, this is boring, puppy gate, let's move on. It's not about that anymore. It's so good, this is the best season ever. This is about the reckoning, and if you don't see it, then you're, then you're too get, late. Then get glasses. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay, now it is time for Balake. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, please drop a comment for Blake Hortzman from The Bachelor, Bachelorette. If you have any questions for him, we will do our absolute best to get them to you. We are going to take a quick break, and then we will be back, we will be back with Blake. Petition to get LVP out and Lala in. Yes, bye.
Okay, we are back with someone I just have burning questions for, oh mostly having to do with his Instagram handle. Welcome, Blake, also known as Balake. Yes, Hi. at the same time. Hi, how are you guys doing? Can you, like, okay, so once I started questioning your Instagram handle, obviously everyone explained it to me. I was going to say those comments yes. are all I saw. It's from a Kean Peel skit. That's correct, Kean Peel skit. Now, you're Instagram famous now. Do you think it's time for a change? No, I, people have wanted me to change my name. It's very it's confusing. So I confusing. know, and people are like... It looks like your name is Blake. K, K A Y. Or it looks like your name is like B Lacalle. Yeah, that's what I always no, say. No, I hear it all the time. Like Brandon Lacalle. Like all the people, like in past season, like my agent, everybody's like, change it to Blake. Dot yes, Horseman, so people right. can find you. I'm like, no, Balake. Okay, I like that you're sticking to your guns. Yes. I respect that. Yeah, and people who get it love it. You know. Right, so. but they're few of those people. I know, I actually had to put up the video of the skit. Oh, you should leave that link like, in your during bio. During this season, maybe I should. Maybe yeah. I'll do that, yeah. That's You're looking so for an explanation. Like an hour. Click. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so. Peel's got to pay me for that though, right? Totally. <laughs> what are you doing here in New York? Uh, so I am doing a Q&A session at FIT. Tomorrow. Oh, no way. Cool. Yeah. Teach us. Yeah. Are you going to so wear cowboy boots right? to FIT? Yeah. I, you might well, be the first. You should. should They're going to okay. roast you. Okay. They're going to roast you Show them a little bit. I like them. No, honestly, I like the style. I like the t-shirt. I think you should wear this. This exact yeah. outfit. Yeah, go just change your undies. Good idea. And, <laughs> and your jeans if you want. Do you wash your jeans? Uh, not often. Me neither. No, not often. Dirty jeans kind of guy? Yeah. 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 That's, how, that's our kind of guy. Yeah. yeah, you don't want them to fade. No, exactly. So you're an interesting guy. Thank you. Because you came in second mm -hmm. for Becca's heart. But you're also, you know, now hanging out with everyone and you're seeing Becca and Garrett sometimes. Is that weird? Uh, a little. It because I just be. have to like, say. There are moments that are There weird. are seasons where you know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are seasons when you know the person who lost like doesn't really care. And even Robbie the runner up, ru exactly. He knew Robbie he wasn't, Hayes wasn't shocked. But I think the world was really shook, and I think you were shook as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I don't think, no offense, you're that good of an actor. I think it was all real. Yeah. No. That's, so, yeah. what is that like now, just hanging out and and seeing Becca and Garrett a lot, and having to follow along on their journey? Yeah. So I, ne there was never any bad blood between me and Garrett ever. Like it was not. It wasn't. I mean, I'd watched a couple seasons back and forth, and I know sometimes the F2 and F1s don't get along, but me and Garrett were pretty good friends throughout. Mm -hmm. So there's never any bad blood with Garrett. Uh, and, I mean, it, there are awkward moments. We've, we've hung out now twice, roughly, for a decent amount of time each time. Uh, and, yeah, there are some moments that are pretty awkward. I remember uh, we were sitting backstage um, watching for the finale. We were watching the finale. Oh, that you know, is awkward. We were, like, watching it on, like, a little TV beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a moment when Colton was saying, like, word for word the exact same thing <laughs> Becca had said to me, you know? Uh, and it was kind of cringeworthy as I was sitting there. Like, I don't think other people in the room realize that it's awkward, but like, I know that she'll, like, there'll be moments right, where she's right. like, well, that's weird. You know, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, insider info. But it's not, like, we're, grown, we're adults. We're right. grown-ups. Like, I'm not gonna, like, hold it against her for following her heart. I would never do that. Right, they and a lot of happy. people, yeah, yeah they, they do. They seem very happy, so. And a lot of people were championing you to be The Bachelor, which didn't happen, disappointingly. But mm -hmm. if you had been cast and you had gotten this crop of women, mm -hmm. um, who do you think you would have been, who would have been gravitated towards? Because there are, people ship you and Hannah G, and obviously <laughs> we ship Hannah G with anyone who makes her happy because we're mm -hmm. obsessed with her here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm assuming you're gonna go on Paradise. I'm assuming she's gonna go on Paradise. So what's that gonna look like? Uh, yeah, so when this cast was first, when I first saw the cast for Colton Season, I was like, oh my god, they're very young, you know, uh, like, yeah. I was like, How old I wasn't you? very excited. I'm, 20, I'm turning 30 in like two weeks. Oh, happy birthday. So I was like, I wasn't very excited. I was like, I don't, like do I even want to do Paradise? You know? right. But then, of course, I watched the season, you get to know these girls, uh, these women, and a lot of them, they're a lot better than I, even the ones who didn't get a lot of screen time, I still feel like were pretty great. Right. Um, but that's the hard part in watching a season, and now especially being on it, I, I see the editing. So mm -hmm. I, I get to know the top four really well. And so yeah. obviously I feel like I would get along with a lot of the top four, but at the same time maybe there's some sleepers and who just didn't get any screen time. That's you know? true. Yeah. So going in, if I go to paradise, yeah, if I, I go to paradise, um, I'll definitely go in with an open mind. I really will. Uh, I w Yes, there are a lot of people shipping me and Anna G. And honestly, <laughs> obscene what, there are of two of them right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said on a podcast that you thought she was pretty or something. Yeah, I mean, she's gorgeous. She's yeah, stunning. Yeah, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, she's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not dumb. Uh, there are a lot of, this is a stunning cast. I think. Yes. That was the first thing I remember seeing there. And when you saw the pictures, like, the, the headshots don't do them any no, justice. They exactly. don't never do anyone no. any justice, but this was a real disparity. What are your thoughts on your headshot? I actually liked my headshot. I think it's good too. I was looking. Your hair looks different in person than it does on yes, the photo, but yeah. other than that, it's that was a good a weird photo. Hair day. But yeah, I uh, <laughs> I remember when the they were all coming out, I was terrified. You know, because that 
picture follows you around for the rest of your life. Right, those poor ever. guys it's this season. Google those poor guys this season. Terrible. Those were the worst headshots I've ever seen. <laughs> but so I was like telling producers, like, oh my, like they're they're like it comes out tomorrow. I was like, oh my god, I was so nervous, you know. Uh, and then it came out. I was like, ooh, I like, yeah. I like my headshot. What is that day like when when you take the headshots? Are all the other guys That's there? Um, so no, you're still like secluded in your hotel room. That's yeah, I believe that was like the second day before you go out in the limo, and. Uh, they like bring you in. Uh, they sit, I was the first person too, so I had like a 7 a.m. call time to get my head shot. Uh, and they bring you in and it's just like a big square you walk into and they just snap like 100 pictures of you. So and they were just fun. doing like, you know, shoulders, like put yeah. your hands in, put your hands out and stuff. So yeah, it's a weird, and then you go back and do those weird question Q and A's where they're like, oh, yeah. what are your, what's your favorite talent? What's your biggest oh, talent? Right. You know, what's your, yeah, exactly. Nobody kind of reads it. What is your biggest fear? No, but then they use it against you on a date oh, and totally. all of a sudden you're jumping totally. off a building. Yes. Totally. <laughs> totally. Dogs, I would say, they're the worst. I would you know say, <laughs> my biggest fear is being a billionaire and having my you're own right, plane. Right. No, you said your biggest fear is having a buffet that you couldn't finish. <laughs> I said that? Yes. That's actually well, a great We've answer. had this conversation before. Oh my God, my amnesia. My biggest fear is just being on the ground at all times. Yeah, and never leaving the house. Well, speaking of Christina, um, <laughs> there, there's been a lot of speculation about you and Miss Christina Shulman, and honestly, it started in our Facebook group because somebody saw you guys out together, and so yeah, you, we, you we damn take, Facebook we group. We take ownership. I think what you guys are good. They're so good. we're like Varys. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Well, I love Game Yeah, really we are so Lord Varys. The morning toasters. They're the our whispers. Yeah, <laughs> and they're just protecting the realm. Little, little, little birds. birds. So they're what's going on? The realm. What's going on there? Uh, no, we did, yeah, we definitely, we dated. Like, I'm not gonna act like we were just, like, flirting. Like, mm -hmm. she came to Denver and visited me a couple times. Oh. Um, but it didn't, it didn't really work out. Uh, it was a very strange point in my life. I was, like, right after. Right. Right after not being The Bachelor. I was officially announced as not being The mm -hmm. Bachelor. And I didn't realize what my life was gonna turn into. And, like, right. what, like, as far as being busy and traveling and mm -hmm. having, you know, all these crazy opportunities. And I just felt like I couldn't be there for her the way she wanted me to. And yeah. vice versa, she realized that too. She has been in this right, right. world a long time too, you know, a long time. So she knows what my life was about to change into. And so it was never, we, I mean, we respect each other a ton and there was a lot of communication throughout. We were honest with each other. Uh, and at the, yeah, at that point, it was just like, I, you know, I, I can't give you what you want. And she mm -hmm. was like, you can't give me what I want, so. And then you were also spotted with Jen Sav in the mm -hmm. toasters. Love her. Oh, you were. And I love ship her. It. Yeah, she's great. I, th we literally just had drinks. Like, I was just in that Wow, it's like so annoying. You can't even fart without drink. the toaster it's, knowing it was, about it. And that was so funny because I remember when, because I remember we, we like went out to like this, she, so I was in Nashville for an event, for a watch party for one of the best, or for one of those episodes. And she happened to be at the bar and saw my flyer. And she was like, hey, oh. do you want to get your, I saw you in town, you want to grab a drink? And I was like, sure, why not? You know, it's Bachelor Nation. Like, yeah. Everybody's yeah. everywhere. Survivors. We had a drink and she's, she's like, let's go to a, another bar. So I was like, okay. And then as soon as you walked in the bar, like I saw people recognize me. Yeah. And, us. and then I saw that person taking that picture. Oh From across God, the bar, so I saw her funny. snapping it. And I was like, well, love that girl. that'll be up on the internet here in a couple minutes. Well, so, <laughs> so do like, you feel like a pressure to stay single right now so that you can go on Bachelor in Paradise? Or if you met someone, would you turn down that opportunity? To, no, I would definitely turn down the opportunity. Bachelor in Paradise is terrifying. Yeah. That terrifies me to It go looks back horrible, the heat. Oh, that too. And, and then just, you don't do good in heat. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. <laughs> took you a second. <laughs> oh, yeah, when he was just, oh, when he was died, when he was passed out. <laughs> uh, no, it's terrifying to go back in that world because the, they have your whole life in their hands. Like, they really do. They can mm -hmm. change, they can ruin it, they can make, like, it's, it's scary. And how my bachelorette, journey ended uh, obviously is scary like I don't want to have to go through all that again so yeah paradise right, is but that seems terrible. like best case scenario it's like you just get your heart broken as opposed to like America turning on you yeah. right etc like, yeah that would that, that would be I bad. mean being yeah both would be really bad right. <laughs> would you have engaged would I get engaged yeah, yeah. it's the right yeah I'm okay. never and honestly you spend more time with that person yes. on Paradise, and like way more time than you do And you see them at their Nashville. worst and sweatiest. Very true, yes. Abby Field from Instagram wants to know, would you ever date a physical therapist from Boston named Abby? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Abby. That's a good question, <laughs> Great honestly. question, that's Very the first insightful. time I've been asked that. Yeah. Do people just try and set you up now with anyone who yes. walks by? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, and like sisters and daughters, and yeah, it's pretty bizarre, How do you go on dates now? Are you on any dating apps? Not on any dating apps, That would be, I think dating apps would be really hard, but I will admit that like I've I've gone on a couple of dates and it's it's strange. Like I remember being on one date um, 
and I was at the restaurant and like people were snapping pictures from across the bar, you know. And she yeah. wasn't even bachelor nation, she was like a normal person. And she was like, does this happen all the time? It's awkward. Yeah, unfortunately it does. That's and like awkward. it's something that you, now it's a conversation I have to have with that person. You right. Know? Like, hey, by the way, there's gonna be an article up on US Weekly about right. it. Right. The morning toasters are for sure gonna talk totally. about this. Yeah. <laughs> what was her name? No, I'm kidding. Um, we got, um, hold on, wait, this is a good question. It just slipped my mind. Just give me 10 seconds. Um, it was, wait, says. fuck, no, it was really good. Um, it was about, whatever. Um, Colton and Cassie, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on them? Uh, they're great. So I'm actually hanging out with them this weekend in Aspen together, all of us. Where are they staying? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you guys are not going to Coachella? Uh, yeah, me Oh, they're and, not going to Coachella? No. Are you not? No. Are you going to Stagecoach? Stage so are we. Are you? Yeah, yeah. we'll be at I'm both because so we hate love. ourselves. <laughs> I love, I can't, I've never been to stagecoach, but I love country music. Uh, stagecoach is truly yeah. just like that's an out-of-body experience. It's so fantastic. Oh, yeah, I'm going to love it so much. Okay, anyway, uh, Cassie and Colton. Um, I remember, I, so it's, it's strange. I talked to Colton. I had dinner probably like two days after he got back with him. I sat down with him, and I could tell he was like fucked up. I mean, because mm -hmm. that just environment is just, like I could see it, you know, in him. Um, but I could tell also that he was, he was happy with how it ended. At the time, obviously, I didn't know the exact details of how it ended. Because uh, even the spoilers hadn't really come out yet then, because it was two days after you got back. At what point but, did you find out how it ended? I mean, I had an idea of how it had ended um, when Reality Steve posted it got like it. that. But I didn't realize, like he, and I'll give him credit, he like, he was really good about not telling me. <laughs> really? Yeah, like very good. Like he even, like there was a couple times where he totally lied to me <laughs> about oh my things God. that happened. Yeah. But listen, I, the, that contract and everything. Totally. You do not want to like, I knew who had won pretty early on, but I didn't know the... How, how they yeah. got there. How they, yeah, how they got there. Uh, Did but you I think tell they you, were engaged? No, I knew they weren't. Okay. I knew they were engaged. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he seems... They seem very happy. He seems infatuated with her, which yeah. is all you can really ask for coming yeah. off the show, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited to see their dynamic yeah, I've met her on like FaceTime a couple times with him. But, but you haven't I've met never, her in person? No, I've not met her in person yet. So I'm excited to see their dynamic in person. Has he like signaled out anyone for you from his season that he thinks you would get along with? Not really actually because I asked him. Um, <laughs> I was like, uh, so have you seen anybody that like, you think you would get along with? You know? and, which is super weird to ask like your friends, who, which one of your ex-girlfriends you think I'd be good with? Right. You know? It's a really weird question. Um, and he really wasn't like anybody in specific. He's, but he was like, there's a lot of... I'm a pretty high energy guy and like I enjoy to have a good time. It's like a lot of the women are very fun. Mm -hmm. I was like, good, good. So, yeah, we'll see. What are your DMs like? I imagine they're quite uh, bustling. Pretty exciting. Bizarre, bustling DMs. Yeah, it's a bustling metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird in there. Do you go through the DMs? Because I know that you're gonna get a lot after this. Every, people, just, people just want to know if they have any chance of it getting open. <laughs> when I posted that morning toast or the morning toast on my, I got a lot of DMs. Like I didn't realize you guys have a very yeah, yes. it's very popular. Thanks guys, make us look cool. <laughs> Thank you all. No, but uh, I don't. I, I'll like scroll every once in a while. I'll like click on one here or there. Um, it's really douchey of me, but now I kind of look for blue check marks. Ugh, Super same. douchey, but like same. But it can be like products or business. Right, yeah, exactly right, a yeah. brand. It can be more than sure. just you know. Well, we'll take any. We'll take box. anything. Is Jason Tartik a vampire? <laughs> yeah, we have theories about him. We love him. In I mean, together. not since I. No, not since I. But met have him, you no. ever seen him during the day with his shirt off in the sunlight? Have you ever seen him during fun? And does yes, he ever? I have, I and he have. doesn't eat garlic, right? <laughs> not that I've seen. He doesn't. I eat have. Garlic. We totally think he's a vampire. Just it's a it's a hidden theory. But speaking of Jason Tartik, you've been spending a lot of time with him and Caitlin. Yes. They seem very happy together. Yes, Caitlin great. seems very happy. They're great together. They bring out like the best parts of each other. It's yeah. so fun to see. And they're so much alike, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Like, I remember he told me, you know, I kind of knew before. Right before he sucked your blood. <laughs> <laughs> I found to suck. No, uh, I can just totally see him with his, like, trench coat, just, like, cornering really? people in back alleys, like, sucking their blood. The part is on the show with his hair the way it was. Yes! Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get behind it. his ears, and he was always in a trench coat. And the widow's peak. Yeah, yes! Yeah, I get it. I could see I, I, his haircut. <laughs> I thought when he got his haircut, I was like, he's for sure the bachelor. Like, I, no, totally yeah. like, I was like, oh, he's the bachelor. It everything. changed everything. Yeah. Does he look back on that haircut with regret? I have a good question. I'll have to We've got to get him on here. I have so yeah. many questions for him. I mean, because well, he's so East Coast banker. Yeah. Like, yeah. So when he was on the. I remember. Okay, well, we're I'll be East honest. Coast. I was super surprised with how far he made it on the show because I never really saw. <laughs> for a vampire. But I mean, right. he, he knows that. Like, right. I never really saw their, re their connection, Becca and Jason's connection. But clearly there was one, like now you know, right. watching it back. But like he didn't get a date the first week, which is, I couldn't imagine that's, that's right. got to be so hard. So they had a really, like 